there is a statement in the book of Exodus when God meets Moses. Uh, there's a beautiful description. The way in which Moses meets God. It is not a pleasant, enjoyable experience. Moses is terrified. He is not even able to experience this thing called God directly. From behind the burning bush. As much distance as he can put between him and this entity. There is this experience. A way of saying that as long as you want to be you. If Moses wants to be Moses, if he wants to hold on to his identity, that experience of dissolving of that identity will be nothing pleasant. It's only when you cross that threshold, something changes. And it is said that Moses asks, who are you? Why are you speaking to me? And God says, I am that I am. This is the biblical God. He's speaking like a Vedantist. He's speaking like a Hindu Brahmin. He is speaking like Krishna. Why? He could have said so many things. He could have described himself in so many different ways. Why I am that I am? Because there is no God. Moses did not meet an entity called God. This is an idiotic way of remembering a moment of awakening, a moment of enlightenment. When Moses woke up from the slumber of life, through a meditative process, through a gradual process, it did not just suddenly happen. He was uneducated. He was simple. He detached himself from the world and its activities. He spent enormous amounts of time alone on the mountain tops. That was his life. In that silence, in that stillness, that individual identity dissolved. A voice, a realization that just said, I am that I am. This is not God saying, I am that I am. This is Moses himself saying, I am that I am. This is what you are longing for as well. Can you say that you are what you are? That's your greatest longing. To be able to say with absolute certainty, look at the certainty in that statement. Look at the power, look at the authority. No confusion whatsoever. There's no need to even explain who you are. Imagine you met someone on the street. You ask them, who are you? And he says, I am that I am. That's how powerful this is. Only when you are in that place of certainty, when there is absolutely no doubt, no confusion about who you are, you can say this. I am that I am. Which is the Brahman as well as the Atman, the universal self, the individual self. There is no contradiction here. There is no confusion in terms of this separation. Okay, I am individual self. Now there is this universal self. What do I do to become that? There is, you are already that. You remove 
all that has been added to you as an additional information that is giving you this feeling of separateness. Your individual self is not something separate from the universal self. You are a cup submerged in the ocean. What's inside the cup is not different from the ocean. You have a boundary, an imaginary boundary that you have created for yourself. This is where I begin. This is where I end. This is what I'm capable of. This is my life. This is my death. These are my friends. This is my world. Beyond all this, there is a universal pulsating sensation of beingness, which has nothing to do with you as an individual, which does not belong to you. Look at it in another way. You are actually dead. You are not even alive. But who is alive? What is this aliveness, which is so real? What is the difference between being alive and being dead? It's not that the body has disappeared. Even when you're dead, the body is still there. Where has it disappeared? But what is that fundamental difference between a dead body and the living you? You know that you are. You are what you are without any explanation attaching that I amness to the body. Independently, you are what you are. Your body is dead. It belongs to the realm of the dead. It is just being animated with the help of this entity called you. You are attached to the body. You are bathing it. You are clothing it. You are repairing it. You are feeding it. Stop caring for it. It will just figure out a way to die. Because that's its natural state. You are reluctantly holding on to it. Something that knows aliveness is keeping even a dead thing alive. That's the power of that aliveness. You add anything to that aliveness. You add a little bit of dust. It will turn that dust into something living. Because the realm itself is aliveness. You add anything to it, a shadow, a thought, a desire. It will turn it into an experience of aliveness because the realm that you are is aliveness. Naturally, all this will be confused with the body because you only experience yourself as the body. For a moment, if you can say, I'm dead. In fact, this is a great meditation. It's a wonderful meditation. If you can do it sincerely, you should not pretend that you're dead. That's not being sincere. You should go deep like the way it happened to Ramana Maharshi, where his journey began with death. If you can just get into this habit of sitting quiet. Again, this should not be confused with physical death. This should not be confused with harming the body. Spiritual death is something totally different. It is to accept death as real, as your natural state. Just go and sit and say, my body is dead. I am not alive. Slowly, this realization will set in. It won't take too long. You will go and sit. This process begins. The affirmation begins. I am dead. 
then in a moment suddenly something will flip and it will give you a glimpse of that something that is alive which is the most obvious of things which is glowing which is all around you inside you outside you you cannot escape it you cannot run away from it and it has nothing to do with you you as in your mind and body it is independent sitting there on the mountain tops all by itself illuminating everything you add one desire to fly it creates a bird you add one desire to run it creates a human being you had one desire to swim it creates a fish you add one desire one thought it it has the ability to turn that thought into something real an entity of its own and it can do this so seamlessly so beautifully that when you wake up to the body when you wake up to that desiring process you forget about this aliveness altogether think about it you wake up in the morning not as a piece of life not as an expression of aliveness you wake up as a body you're thinking about what you should be doing to sustain the body to protect the identity of the body it's all about the body morning till evening the aliveness is somewhere in the background to bring that to the foreground to push the body aside is the process when you remove this dead weight quite literally you will experience the lightness of your being 